All right, so next up, guys, let's take a look at Duke versus Houston. Houston coming in as the one seed at 32-4. and four. Duke coming in as the four seed, 26-8. and eight. Houston coming off a win over Texas A&M, which they tried their hardest to choke that game away. That was a complete collapse against A&M. Like, they, they're lucky to still be alive in this tournament. All their guys fouled out. They had walk-on shooting free throws at the end. That They're lucky A&M is incompetent. Otherwise, they would have won that game. As for Duke, all right, really impressive win. Second round, pretty dominant over James Madison, which I really don't know how good James Madison was. Uh, did beat Michigan State in overtime, you know, but did lose to Appalachian State a couple times. But Duke kind of looked a little iffy in the first round against Vermont, but r- looked pretty good against James Madison. I'll say that. That's kind of the Duke I've been expecting. Uh, it's the Duke I expected against Vermont, but we didn't get it. Against Vermont, Duke just looked out of control and didn't look like Duke at all. Uh, in particular, I think, is it Blake's for Duke? Like, he, he can't freaking dribble, man. He looks like a peewee kid, a peewee basketball player when he steals the ball and just, like, it. it's bad. Like, for a major Division One school, that shouldn't be happening. But focusing on Duke, all right, led by Filipowski, Proctor, and then let's look at Duke's schedule a little bit here. All right, focusing on tournament teams. All right, they've lost to Arizona, single digits. Arizona's still in the tournament, so it's not a bad loss. Went over Michigan State. I went over Baylor, which got beat last week. And then getting into conference play, as far as tournament teams are concerned, you've got a win over Clemson. You've got two losses to North Carolina. You've got a win over NC State, a loss to NC State, and then a win over Virginia. All right, so they have not beaten North Carolina, but have wins over Baylor. And then they split with NC State, which is still in the tournament as well. Houston, led by Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer. Houston won't been one of the dominant three teams all year, them, Purdue, and UConn. Looking at Houston's schedule, tournament teams, you've got a 14-point win over Dayton. You've got a four-point win over AM. So them and AM had played each other prior to last night. Then in Big 12 play, all right, we've got losses to Iowa State, TCU, wins over Tech, BYU, Texas, lost to Kansas. That was when Kansas was full strength, though. Not near the Kansas that's been in the tournament. Wins over Texas, Iowa State, Baylor. Kansas, TCU, Texas Tech, and then ultimately got beat down pretty good by Iowa State in the Big 12 championship, but I'm not going to read into that too much. Seemed like they wanted a little more, you know. As far as the matchup predictor, looks like Houston is being picked 76.8% of the time and is favored by three and a half. So I think ultimately what this game is going to come down to, I mean, Duke has the potential to play with anybody. Like I've said that all year. If they can all live up to their potential, their main few players, like they can reach, they can probably win the national championship, but they just haven't done it. Like against Vermont, for example, like they just looked not very good to me for a Duke team. Like not what I would expect a Duke basketball team to look at, look like, and not what this Duke team should look like. Like going back to last year in the NCAA tournament, Tyrese Proctor looked like the best player on the court at all times. And for Houston, you just got to play smarter. All right. They had that game in the bag last night, they were about double digits. And just tried to choke it away. I mean, LJ Cryer and Jamal Shedd are good enough to beat almost any team in the country. And the good news is for Houston, they got that game out of the way already. You know, a lot of it was due to foul trouble. Like, I was worried if it went into another overtime, they were going to be screwed just because they were so uh, down as far as major players were concerned. All their starters were fouling out. But Houston, we know they're good enough to play with anybody. And the good news is, like I said, they got this loss, or sorry, this close win out of the way already like a lot of the times you want to get it out of the way and then sometimes those teams will go on to win the tournament you know and I think that may be the case here I don't know we'll see obviously there's some tough competition the way this played out like the Sweet 16 is pretty stacked there's not any Cinderella's that are just going to get blown out this week I think every game is going to be a good game and this one's going to be a good game as well Duke a little more inconsistent this year than Houston and like I said Duke can definitely beat Houston I think they're very talented they're better than A&M is for sure uh, I think they can beat Houston, but I think consistency wins here. I think guard play transfers over. Give me Houston here. It's going to be a close game, though. Give me Houston by single digits, but I think Duke is a little too inconsistent, and Houston wins in the end. So give me Houston, but by five or less. Like, it's going to be a really close game. But give me Houston here and a really close one. Who do you think wins this game and why? Let me know down in the comment section. Make sure to like this video and subscribe.